Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the LHSAA State Championship match. We have the two best Rocket League teams in the Great Bayou State of Louisiana. We have the GLHS Hornets versus the Live Oak Eagles. I am your host, Skiz, joined alongside my co-caster, Pyro, and we got the five and the ten seed here today. Ooh. We got the five seed and the Hornets and the ten seed out of Live Oak, but Pyro, don't let that 10 seed fool you. This this mm. Oak team is here to play. Oh, the Live Oak Eagles. They're here to soar, baby. They've soared into the championship on quite a journey. All right, they took down the two seed. They took down the three seed. And not only that, they did it in sweeping fashion. What 10 seed does that in literally any bracket at all? This is clear that Louisiana High School is proven the best of caliber possible in today's event you can see that folks that run that was made by the live oak rocket league team but check out the hornets as well okay they had a journey too against those dths griffins in the semifinals pulled that win out skids in game seven and you mentioned uh those griffins the number one seed the hornets actually lost their final regular season game against that dths griffin squad by a score of one to three so Getting that revenge, the Hornets over the Griffins has to feel so sweet and give you a little bit of momentum going into this finals match. We are going to have a best of seven series. First team to win four is going to be crowned your Louisiana State champions. And not only that, have a chance to play in the national stage on the play versus cup. Oh, and, and what stakes to be involved to work at a goal like that. It it takes something to motivate players to get to that the next stage, whether it just be bragging rights or maybe a little something extra, like the national stage of the play versus cup. I mean, this is very exciting. Like you have the opportunity of representing Louisiana High School Rocket League with just one match here. So will the nerves get to them or will the pressure make diamonds for either the five or the 10 seed? Only time will tell now, Skids. Yes, indeed. And we do have the lineups here for you. We'll get into those once we kick on over into the broadcast. But each of these players is going to be trying to make a name for themselves. Also, as a lot of college programs nowadays are kicking over esports and some even offering scholarships for these sort of things. So being able to present your talents on the high school level with the potential to put out film and put out tapes to get on a college team is just going to be super great for these kids. So hopefully the nerves don't get to them. We'll see them shake off game number one and move off into the series. I'm sure they'll get a little bit more comfortable. Oh, yeah. As the series goes on, we'll surely see that comfort rise. And, you know, these players at the high school stage have so much to work for, so much longer to go. We hear about young prodigies in Rocket League, professional leagues all the time. Uh, First Killer was the 15-year-old to come into the scene and completely break it through in the stage. Now it's Daniel, uh, lately joined Space Station Gaming, and at 15 years old was on the, the first LAN in two years for Rocket League. Made it all the way to the top four okay it, you're seeing young guns out here in the rocket league stage but they can easily be the next best hit in rocket league and that kind of stuff all starts here with a statewide louisiana competition to crown a victor that's going to go to that national stage i know i'm excited pyro i'm sure you are too everyone else in the chat we look forward to getting these games started up here the players are going to be loading up into the games we're going to take a short little intermission and we will see you guys just on the other side for the lhsaa state championship
And we are back, folks. The players are loaded up in the lobbies. They should be done with their warm-ups and ready to go into the action. Pyro, we had a little bit of off time there, and we were discussing some of the matchups that we're looking forward to mm. in this next series between the Hornets and the Live Oak Eagles. Almost forgot the Eagles there. We got it, though. We're good. <laughs> so, so Pyro, what's some things, some keys to victory for, let's Ooh. talk about the Hornets first, because we got the 10 seed Eagles that we already right. talked about. They swept through the bracket. Yeah, yeah. So for the Hornets, if you're coming up against a team who hasn't dropped a game in they can't even remember the last time they had, it was way back three rounds ago in the bracket, take game one. Come out in a storm. Do not let this team get ahead. Don't let that momentum rile and fire up. Stop them early. And folks, they're going to have the chance to do that right here. Right now, we're here with game one for the Louisiana High School Athletics Association. This is the play versus spring 2022 championship. It's live. The GLHS Hornets in the white and the live Oak Eagles in the orange. We got Pesky Sniper trying to get the ball out of their defensive happen. Drispy's playing off the wall. Oh, great tip there from Sniper to loft it over. Is that going to be enough? And it is a beautiful assist from Drispy to stop the push. And then the touch from Sniper to do just that and snipe it down three quarters of the field. True to their name. You got to like to see it. And that we will see is live Oak. Rocket League Gold Eagles taking the lead early. This is uh, just about the opposite of what I was asking for, Skids, for the uh, Grand Lake squad to do, was don't allow this uh, team to quake up early. And, oh, with a goal in the first 30 seconds, that's exactly what they did. Yeah, they are setting the tone now. And the ball has been on this attacking side for the majority, but another sniper, a little open net action. And... Uh, GLHS, they want to push forward and get something as Austin's aerial attack getting the demo, but Drispy with the stop. Um, the Hornets do want to keep this attacking front going, but they don't want to leave too many uh, counter plays. Yeah, because look at this one surfacing already. Dizzy has to really hop into the mix on the quick recovery to get that save, but this hotel looking for another. It is combated against and it does look precarious when Grand Lake, they, they rile up an offense and then it's quickly countered against them. They have to make sure that third man is back and making sure they get the defensive units prepared for any attack coming out of Live Oak. Pesky Sniper trying to get a read on the ball, but Drispy off the wall. Doesn't get the reset, but trying to bring it down. Austin on the save. That's going to allow the Hornets to try and make a push. But Sniper, we calling out his name. A bunch here is just keeping this ball on the attacking side. And Drispies wants to continue that there. That's a beautiful pass that comes across the face of the goal line. Yet nobody there to pick it up. Where's the support from Live Oak? They're playing like they're up three to zero, not just one to zero. This game could swing at any moment. This could be it. Dizzy sees Austin downfield. There's the bump on the goalie. The shot goes off of the left post as well. And the equalizer's in for Grand Lake. Wow, Dizzy there with the punch through and the knock the, to hold the defender off. Great placement, excellent communication, and Grand Lake ties it up at one apiece. 242 left to go in this game. Number one, both teams looking to steal this series as Sniper, great epic save there, rather, from him to block there. Now it's still at one. And the Hornets on the offensive again. We've seen some great team plays, and now, now they just go bumping each other. <laughs> well, take note of how the first goal from Grand Lake actually happened. It was that bump that happened earlier. Oh, but it's just a shot that gets ripped from the sideline directly into the net. Dizzy did not cover the weak side. And Drispy's with that first assist and now a goal to his name. He's put up both points here for Live Oak. 2.17 left. Grand Lake winning the kickoff here, but Live Oak able to repossess right away. DeShoto, great save there. Wrapping around, flipping the camera angles, be able to get the shot on that one. Now Drispy's trying to get it out of the corner, but just too suffocating there from Dizzy. 
who wraps around quickly on the defensive front. Drispy's getting the full boost now, taking it off the wall. This is going to be a center shot here. Can Sniper get it? No, Austin able to clear it out and giving the Hornets a little bit more breathing room. Well, Drispy's just barely got some breathing room there, was almost bumped or demoed out of the play. And you know, I was saying it earlier, take note of how Grand Lake scored their first goal it was because they got in the mix. They did bump that last goalie out there, taking notes from the new knockout mode that just got released from Rocket League. We're bumping, demoing. That's the name of the game. It could be that as well for Grand Lake if they want to get back into this game. And Dizzy with the aerial pursuit could do just that. It is a fake, though. Austin, the one to take the shot. And the third man there, Arctic, is going to whip past the ball. So... Live Oak still able to hold on to this control. The Shodol up. Austin to break away, but it could be a big vulnerability. The Shodol bumps out the goalie. Crossbar down on the goal line and saved away. Live Oak trying to ice this one away. One minute remaining. Grand Lake has to get something moving here. And then we got Austin chipping it on over. And Dizzy punching it through for the tie game. Two to two with less than a minute left. It was heartbreaking here for Live Oak. This team was inches away from getting a two-goal lead. And look how the defense just breaks down on the other side. They clearly were not ready to recover and get the defense set again. And the punishment was there. The game tied it to a piece. We talked about how important it is for Grand Lake to take this first game one win. And they have a chance to do just that with one more goal. Dizzy on the attacking here, but DeShoto, great punch out, and that's going to open it up. One defender back, and that's going to be Austin, but stopping it just enough to allow the team to rotate back. Austin with the miss there, but Dizzy on the clear. Great way to play the backup, and Drispy keeping it on the attack. 20 seconds left. Next goal might be the oh. one to clinch it. We got off the backboard, and Austin bringing it over, posterizing two defenders from Live Oak, putting them in a one-goal advantage. Austin the GOAT put it all in caps lock greatest of all time making himself look like it there on that play beautiful we talked about how it would only be one goal needed from them but here's another pursuit at the last second from Live Oak which just goes off of the goal line gets sent away there's another opportunity coming around the backboard pinched away backboard defense looking perfect from Grand Lake but the last shot is going in are you kidding me? One second left and the game is all tied up. There it is. I thought it was going to buzz, but it tricks off of the bounce in just enough time. We are going to have one second left here before going into overtime in this game. Number one, the clock has hit triple zeros and the ball is down. Overtime on a last second goal from Live Oak. Next score takes game number one. All it takes is one more here in extra time. But we'll find that clutch factor, that one to get the tone setter in this long best of seven championship match. It is Grand Lake to try and find the first opportunity. They'll look to carry this momentum into the extra time, but they're having a hard time holding on to that possession. Yeah, on the attacking front now. They're trying to get a counter here, Live Oak is, but they're not going to be able to do it. Now, in the defensive quarter, they have to clear this one out. We've seen uh, Grand Lakes be able to just dump it on in from here. Keep an eye out for Austin. they got to be able to neutralize him, putting in the last goal and the last assist for the Hornets. Keep an eye out as well for Trispy and Dizzy. Two players, and there's Dizzy coming around the corner with two goals in this game. Arctic from all the way downtown is going to come to the half court line, and I'll pop it right past. And this is back to center field. Trispy's great read there. Can he get maybe a second touch off of the corner? Great 50 50. Another challenge gets right past him, and Austin has incredible amount of space. Is he going for the flip reset, the dunk, something to set it up right in the paint? Dizzy now, great opportunity past two defenders. There he is off of the corner, looking for that drop down pass. Narrowly misses the ball. Arctic's too quickly into the net, and it's another opportunity diffused for Grand Lake that is set up once again. Austin the go! Scores in overtime for the first win of Grand Lake. 
Austin proving that he belongs with that name. The beautiful off the backboard pledge and DeShoto unable to stop it. Some suffocating defense there from Live Oak towards the end of that overtime period. But if you let Austin and you let the Hornets get about five or six shots there in overtime, I mean, one of them's bound to bounce in. There's only so much you can do. Yeah, Austin to go. Do not give this player space. That was the second ridiculous <laughs> double tap that we have seen. And it's coming out to tell Live Oak, hey, we came to play. And I can't emphasize it enough. That game one victory, so vital, so important for Grand Lake. They're coming against a team who got two sweeps in a row against the two seed, against the three seed. But now against Grand Lake, it's going to be a different story. Yeah, Grand Lake with the first one, and they almost slipped away there. They had the lead going into about 10 to 12 seconds left in the regulation period, and then the last second goal from Live Oak almost gave them a chance, but the Hornets able to hold on and take that game number one. That was such an exciting matchup. I'm looking at the stats here. I mean, you got Austin with the two goals and the one assist, and then Drispies was, was doing a great job there on Live Oak, able to spread the wealth there with a couple of assists and then a goal himself. Yeah, and it's important to be a well-rounded teammate, be able to play different roles. That's what Rocket League's all about. There's no one player that plays offense and one player that plays defense. No, that rotation so crisp for both teams to be able to play both roles. Keep an eye out for Drispies to do both of those. But it was Austin the Goat to score the final goal for Grand Lake to take game one, and they'll be looking to take game two as well. Grand Lake already trying to make something happen here. Austin out of boost. It doesn't seem to happen quite a bit, but he got the full recovery there. Looking to see if Sniper can get some offense going here. We saw him get the first goal of this matchup before Drispy was taken over, but now Dizzy actually getting the demo on DeShoto. That's going to open up a little bit of time. We've seen this story before. Austin through the air, but Drispy with an excellent save now as Sniper is going to try and take it on the counter before getting stopped by Dizzy. Oh, and now Live Oak know that if they see Austin the Goat with space, with boost, with ball, pounce on it immediately. The game has changed in Rocket League, where you can't wait on the goal line for the shot to come. No, flip resets will get them past it easily. Double taps as well. So you have to challenge quickly. You have to have a second defender on the goal line. And so far, Live Oak have done that in disciplined fashion. Yet how long can they manage a scuffle on the goal line? And that Tom Fuller is going to work out for Austin. First goal for Grand Lake. Yeah, you see here, we're going to check it out in the replay. Austin's able to slip by because DeShoto actually gets the touch on the ball as Drispies comes in and redirects it. So a little bit of an awkward pinch that brought it back and gave the follow through. So uh, a little bit of a miscue there from Live Oak. Going to put them down 1-0, but they're already in striking range. Dizzy knocking it out with Austin flying through. DeShoto redeems himself on that nice save. Really does feel like with these extended possessions from Grand Lake that this team just needed something to wake them up. Were they the first to score all the goals? No, not quite. But are they the next team to put on great shots and look for more opportunities? Absolutely. It's been a, a three out of four split here in terms of possession, 75% plus. And it's just stifling. It's suffocating. Live Oak needs some space to breathe here. And they will relentlessly try and get that space grounded on a play there from Oh Drifts, which almost worked out. But it is broken up. And a counterattack mounting now for Grand Lake. Popped up. A little too high. Oh, oh, man. Everyone was gone there. And a little bit too late on the rotation. You mentioned the first shot was too high. But Austin... Capping that full boost on the left-hand side, able to get the redirect. Dangerous execution there from Live Oak. They really had the opportunity there on the offensive front. Could it knock it through and getting punished on the backside? Hornets now up 2-0 in game number two. Sometimes the best missed shots are the greatest passes. Dizzy, why pass it up to anyone else when you can give it to yourself? There's the great aerial and the finisher. Grand Lake showed no signs of stopping. Live Oak had them on their heels in game number one, but now Hornets are full pedal to the metal. Who's going to be the one to step up here from the Eagles over there in the orange down 0 to 3? Our Tech Biscuits now. That's a name that's been a little bit quiet here. He's been playing his role, hasn't been up on the offensive front, but part of that suffocating defense here from the Hornets. 
And maybe the defense will finally start to break down. There's a chance around the corner. Dizzy skying right under that ball. Austin, the GOAT, will pick it up. It does get saved. There, pesky sniper ready to play behind it and actually move up the field as well. This could be a great transition for them, and that's exactly what it will be. Drispies from coast to coast for the first goal of Live Oak. Getting Live Oak on the board. That's what they needed here. Three goals is not a large deficit to come down from. We've seen them score within 10 seconds, so two and a half minutes. That's plenty of time for the Live Oak Eagles. Two and a half left to go. Drispy with the first touch, knocking it through. Everyone's getting established here on this next connection. Drispy trying to punch it, and now another open goal here as Sniper rotating back the ball in an awkward position in the corner. Austin unable to play it, and that's going to be a, a punch back here. Biscuits playing that midline exceptionally well, and with Dizzy trying to punch through on the corner. It seems like even when Live Oak gets a clear, they find a way, uh, the Hornets find a way to keep that offense going. That's right. It's going to be all about extending possessions right now for Live Oak. They seem to uh, have lapsed in terms of gaining control in this game. And with control comes comfort and then confidence and then quicker challenges and harder shots. And uh, without a sense of that, Live Oak are going to continue to falter. There is a fourth that well, when it gets laid up in the middle of the field like that, you know this Grand Lake team will strike. Yeah, that is a beautifully executed play right there. Biscuits with the great assist, excellent placement, and now down by three. This is where Live Oak has got to got to figure something out here. If not for this game, for the next in the series here. Four to one now, a minute 20 left. Let's see, DeShoto try and push his way through. Certainly be an attempt there, but look at this counter. Maybe starting to mount, it looks like it will be. Too far for DeShoto. The challenge there lays it up, though, for Austin to go. This is lethal. There's the pass, but oh, Drispy does great work getting in the mix immediately. That's exactly what we want to see from a team like Live Oak for their fortune to favor them, at least in the game two and beyond, is breaking up the play immediately when you see Austin working it. It's going to be batted away down to the corner and maybe another chance here for Grand Lake. Grand Lake trying to punch it through. Dizzy and Austin both with two goals. Can either of them finish out the hat trick here? Artek clearing it off from the halfway. 30 seconds left. Going to be a little bit too much to try and mount back. I'm just saying that so I can maybe uh, cast your curse into a close matchup here. And it works! Ooh. Crispy punching it through for another goal. That's going to give Live Oak their second of the game. You might get signed over here to Live Oak there, Skids. Uh, do it, doing quite a favor for them for that goal. It is feasible here, folks, for Live Oak to get back in it for their potential first win in this series. The kickoff will favor them as well as it bounces towards the net off of the crossbar. And there's oh, the goal as well from the Shoto. It's now a one-point game. Oh, you can't make this up, folks. You cannot make this up. Two goals within a 10 second span. And now just down by one, we've seen them score to tie it up with one second remaining. 19 seconds left. The Shoto has to be swinging through here. Drispy's got enough boost to get aggressive. Grand Lakes trying to get the clear now. 10 seconds left. Can the Eagles punch one more through? Drispy on the attack, gets dribbled right past him. And now it's looking like one second. Ball going to touch the ground and end the game. Can Drispies get this dribble through here? Or is Austin just going to punch through one more? Ooh. Ball does end up scraping the dirt. And that is going to be the Hornets scraping by the skin of their teeth for game number two. And man, Live Oak looked the best in that last minute that we've seen them in the series. So coming in game number three in essentially a must win, let's hope they can bring that energy and try and scrape one in game number three. Oh, well, there's definitely some energy here from the side of Live <laughs> Oak. And you saw how it all propelled in favor for him towards the end of the game. And listen, if they can get two goals in the last 30 seconds there, I don't know what this team can't 
do. No matter what scoreline you see in the future of this series, you just can't count this team out. Nor can you count out Grand Lake. We still have to credit this team for operating so efficiently on the field. You have Dizzy. You have Austin. Both two goals in this game. Neither of them completed that hat trick that you were asking for there, Skids. But well-rounded team still. And that's what's important here. The cohesion, the coordination from a unit like that always surfaces higher for Rocket League. Yeah, you don't need the hat trick. You just got to score more than the other team, right? It doesn't have to be too flashy to catch the W in this series. Now, I think Live Oak did a really phenomenal job of making adjustments. I called out towards the beginning mm -hmm. of that matchup how on their attacking side, it seemed to be a little bit of an overextension because as soon as the ball trickled out, there was nobody to have even enough boost or a situation to pick up the boost and rotate back. So great adjustments there. And let's see if they can capitalize that on game number three as the Grand Lake Hornets up 2-0 in the series, trying to inch closer in this best of seven. Ooh, well, there is a need for composure already. Look at a little bit uncoordinated there on the defensive line from Live Oak, but no punishment to come from the side of Grand Lake. And, well, maybe surfacing a better performance will mean that they can test the shot taking from Grand Lake, right? We've seen so many quick goals come out from Grand Lake in game one, game two. In order to stifle them here, in order to combat them and maybe find a win in game three, it could be about getting this first goal. They did that the first game. Let's see if they could do it in game number three. Hopping on board here with Austin, who was able to punch through a couple there, but still, I, it's crazy. Two goals seemed like a quiet game for Austin. As now Artek is trying to get this one out of here, but the Shoto lofting it up and Austin trying to swing on through. Counterattack coming here from Sniper, who's able to sneak it past the defenders. Off the back wall, can he get it centered? You see a couple of the players ready to pounce. And now the Shoto dropping back and getting the defensive stop. Great save there from Drispy. I've noticed from Live Oak, they're playing one in the goalie and one on the side, coming in from two angles. It's only hurt him once, but it saved a lot of potential uh, problems. I think they're just very well established right now on defense that shows that they're not still trying to catch up and recover and get in that rotation no they're very much waiting their turn and being in position for anything that comes but that does also slow down the pace and the momentum of the game so if you're looking for live oak to kind of make their break out and hit it quick that it might have to be on that counter attack rather than when they're locked up on their defensive side. Maybe they can contest them once more here. Dizzy shot is fired away. Austin now in the attacking quarter, coming out of the, coming out in the corner. Drisby on the counter, swinging on through, but Dizzy some excellent defense here, and Austin trying to bring it down in the counter. We've seen Biscuits on a couple of these Ooh. rotations as Dizzy puts a shot down and DeShotl, the very difficult save. Anytime you're traveling the opposite way like that, being able to time up is brilliant. And can Driss be coming through the counter? No, Dizzy on the smothering goal halfway through this game, and we are still tied at zero. And well, maybe this was what we needed from Live Oak, was to stall out Grand Lake's offense one way. I technically didn't say they had to be the ones that, that needed to score. It'd be nice, but... Still 0-0 zero, zero goose eggs on either side for these squads. But look at this quick counter Drispy. Oh, it is going to get added away off of the ceiling. You see both contenders go up for it quick. Oh, and Drispy's shot will be ripped back away from them. Live Oak, they may have zero goals, but it was it is not without an effort to try. Yeah, you mentioned that Live Oak wants to be first to score. You could you could win 1-0 and be the first to score with 10 <laughs> seconds left. That's all you need, right? <laughs> uh, this 0-0 is a little bit of a more defensive push than we have seen so far in the series. Who is going to break through first? Is the Shodel's going to try here? It's a 1v3. The rebound is going to get there. And no, Sniper on the shot. And there it is. All three players playing a role there. Drispy able to get the double rebound from the Shodel, from Sniper. And Drispy's punching it through. The persistence puts Live Oak on the board first. Does eventually pay off for them. They do finally get that first goal like they did back in game one. And ooh, might even get the second goal. The read off oh! of the backboard. The ceiling. The shuttle to finish it. That is 
really. We've seen them score quick, score off of these kickoffs, and yet again, they are going to punish the Hornets for it. You have some great defense for the first three and a half minutes and let up a cheeky little kickoff goal. That's got to be frustrating, but nothing they can't hit a quick mental reset from. If you can expect any team to come back and reset and show their dominance once again, I wouldn't be surprised that Grand Lake have the capabilities to do that. But, you know, we are seeing them play from down and, oh, that is an open lane that, well, who better than Austin the Goat to find the first goal for Grand Lake? You got to put the ball in your playmaker's hands when you need a big play. And so Austin's going to be just that for you. Getting a little bit of extra speed there on the stats. Friend the show will try to chip it in there. So a little 85 mile an hour looks pretty good on the <laughs> stat pad. But what looks even better here is a win. And the trying to do that. Coming off of an attempted second kickoff goal. That's now Sniper stopping the ball in this half. One minute remaining. Grand Lakes up or down by one rather, not used to saying that. So they're gonna try and come back to get this 3-0. The Grand Lake, they're not making it easier for themselves to make this comeback. You saw two players there on the backboard kind of clustered up together, neither of them hitting the ball. There needs to be coordination from this squad. There needs to be call outs and there needs to be some defense. Where is it for the third goal? Drispies gets it, which could lock in this win. That could be it. We've seen some rapid fire goals here, but three, one, now four live. Oh, 33 seconds left. Let's see if Austin and the rest of the Hornets can make something happen here. Drizzy on the kickoff. Drispies, we got Drizzy and Drispies coming through on the counter attack. Great save there uh, from Biscuits, I believe that was, is now Austin on the counter attack, climbing up the wall on the left-hand side, bringing it out of the corner. Is he going to be able to punch it in? Dizzy's going to try here, but Drispy says, no, thank you, sir. The aerial battle is going to keep it on the orange half. Ten seconds left. They have to score now, and it may just be too late. Four seconds, and there's the clear. That is going to be all she wrote once the ball hits the ground and triple zeros comes through. But we're going to get another goal anyway, because why not? <laughs> Austin the Goat. <laughs> He's on this kind of two goal streak and uh, although he got a little bit of help from his opponent there He's got to keep that streak alive. Well one streak has certainly died and that is the win streak of Grand Lake instead now we have live Oak rivaling back and well, Skids, it just wouldn't be a championship if we didn't have a game here a longer series We can ensure that this one will not be a sweep Oh, we didn't want the sweep anyway. We want to see all the Rocket League that we can. I don't know about you, Pyro, but that's overall here on my side. And so Live Oak able to clinch through their first in the series. Close game so far. I mean, we had the overtime. We had the one goal difference in the second game. So it was only a matter of time until they came out on top on the scoreboard. It really was. And a part of that capability that they had was I think they finally stopped Austin to go. He started really getting explosive again towards the end of the game, but just stopped him well enough. And throughout the game, we saw goose eggs on either side of the board for so long. And maybe that could be the rut that Live Oak needed to put Grand Lake in to Get back into this series. Get back into this game. They could be feeling more comfortable here, more confident. And as a team, Live Oak, they're ready to rival back and maybe tie this series up at 2-2. Trispy's already trying to get an early goal here. Great center, but not enough boost from the other attackers, so they had to drip back, and ain't no worries about that. 30 seconds in, and it's stayed in the Live Oak attacking front this entire time. Trispy playing pool over here getting smacked around as biscuits snipes it into the top corner i didn't think that was gonna go in but look at this just absolute missile rocket <laughs> in oh it did the shuttle was the one to punch it through that's what happened still no arctic biscuits waiting for this player to make their name known and well no better way to do it with a shot it gets sent from the other side of the field. That could be Grand Lakes getting back into the swing of momentum here. And with some defense there, they will surely hold on to that lead. But now you have a player like Austin to go coming back upfield, looking for that solo play. 
I think if Grand Lake continue to feed a player like that, they'll keep this lead extended. So in the first three games, I don't think that Live Oak has able, been able to take back the lead from Grand Lake. Every time that Live Oak was leading, it was either at the start of the mm. game or a tie. So let's see if they can change that here. Started off one goal at a time. Going to try and bring it to one apiece. Austin the Goat out of the corner. But Grand Lake and the Hornets, they want to just keep this momentum going. We do. Arctic Base gets found his way around. Couple defenders there, so it's already looking frantic for Live Oak, and that could be part of the reason. You see teams operate very differently when they have to work from behind, right? As Live Oak is, is down and has to make their way back, they haven't been able to get that lead, and that could be partly why the mentality tends to shift for a lot of teams when they're down, and for Live Oak, maybe it's that mental, maybe it's that reset that they need, maybe it's a free shot on the net, the <laughs> Shodal, an equalizer. Maybe it's all the things you mentioned, or maybe it's just a nice opportunity <laughs> that they are in the great position to punish, and that's what Rocket League is all about, right? You gotta be in the right place at the right time, and the Shodal and Drispy able to do just that, punish the mistakes of the Hornets, and we are back to tied up with three minutes left. They've tied it up, but can they take the lead from Live Oak? It will be no simple feat, but oh, with defenses like that, maybe they can pull it off. Arctic Biscuits, a name that's being much more well known here in game number four. Could be that playmaker to get Grand Lake back into it. Instead, it's Dizzy with a shot that gets sent towards the net and oh, it will not go in directly off of the right post. A game of inches, and he was on the wrong side of it there. Dizzy going to try and punish them for that. Going to help to get another one through here. He's got a couple of shots in and looking like two saves there on the board. So playing all angles here as Drispy tries to get the attacking side going. But Austin hasn't done much so far this game. The other players have been stepping up huge. Let's see if he can punch anything through here. Sniper with the oh. miss, but the great epic save there from DeShoto, but the rebound is gonna be too much from Biscuits. Starting to see why maybe Austin's not the player that needs to score. They just need to bait out all the defenders. It was a double commit there from Live Oak that, well, created the lane for the next shot taker to score. So Grand Lake, if they want to keep this lead going, if they want to hold on to it, they have to use Austin as not only a resource to score the goals, but to provide the opportunity. Everyone has to step up massive. You got to play your role, but also switch it up a little bit to win this Louisiana State Championship. And now live Oak. They want to tie this series up bad. They don't want to go to an elimination game just yet. Dizzy hitting the flip reset. Maybe just a bit too far out. Unable to punch that through. Great defense from Live Oak and Austin. Not sure if that was an intentional miss or not, but that's going to leave the door wide open as the ball does get centered, but a little bit too high for Live Oak to put down any shots. So no need to panic, but Drispy does end up getting the demo and Dizzy the clear is exactly what they needed because the, down the numbers advantage, that is a scary situation. Oh, and I think it's going to get a little more terrifying. Arctic Biscuit says, yeah, that might buy you some time to get back on defense, but not with a shot like this. Rips it right under the crossbar and the lead extended for Grand Lake. Anytime you clear through the center, it is extremely risky and Biscuit's right there to punch it through at the right place at the right time. We've seen Live Oak score two goals with less than a minute left, so can they do it again? Or will Grand Lake take a 3-1 series lead? 53 seconds left in this game. Number four, Drispy wants to get this one and hasn't scored yet. He's been their striker so far with six goals in this series. Wanted to get on the board here. Austin missing there. Is this going to be a punishing moment? No, a little bit slower. Maybe back the other way off the rebound. Austin a little bit too high on that kicker. And a clear out here from Drispy. SD Sniper on the demo, opening a 3v2. Drispy on another demo as well. That's a 3v1 with a reset. But Austin playing that tremendously. Knocking it on in for a little bit of a clear. 
might just have enough time here. There's to show it all the way down the field. But look at that. Two defenders ready to pounce on it from Grand Lake. A ball is wide open there. Dizzy puts this game to bed. And Grand Lake in the next game are going to find themselves a match point. Elimination game is going to be coming up next. Grand Lake dropping game number three, but came back even stronger in this one. Live Oak hoping to summon in some of that power that they have had in the past. Four seconds left is going to wrap this one up here. You can talk about the keys to this next matchup here in just a little bit, but just have to acknowledge, I mean, Arctic Biscuit stepped up huge in that game. Ooh. Look at him up in the front and center as he deserves for that game four performance. Yeah, you got to call it out like you see it. Austin the Goat, actually the lowest score on the side of Grand Lake for once. And that's because they've discovered this new strategy, which is, okay, Austin, take your shots, make the defense panic and sweat a little bit. So much so that there's no defense left after you make the play. And we'll clean up. We'll do the job. You be the playmaker. We'll be the goal scorer. So... Talk about keys to victory for Live Oak, for them to get themselves back into this, right? They've got to have the coordination on defense. You know, if you see the shot coming out, only send one defender. That other defender has to be ready for the impending shot coming later. Yeah, you talked about that, and it was three of the goals there for the Hornets were follow-up goals. They were off the backboard. They were off of second-chance opportunities, with the exception of the snipe there from Biscuits, and that was a complete change from the first couple of games where they were just sniping all over the place on these open goals. So Live Oak did make an adjustment. Now can they make the second adjustment off of the Hornets adaptation? And whoever can get the better follow-through is going to be crowned your champion. And when you're in this elimination game, you fought through the gauntlet you fought through the bracket you gotta be perfect and now on the brink of elimination live oak is gonna try and fight back grand lake high school up 3-1 in your lhsaa state championship and grand lake a team that has performed so well under pressure how did they topple the first seed the number one seed before this it was in game seven these moments where everything's on the line and it's the last game possible they know how to come up big, how to come up strong. And with match point, this is a very, very lethal team. Grand Live Oak need everything in their arsenal. Pull out all of the tools to keep this series alive. Crispy now in the corner trying to get the early goal. They've been striking first in a couple of these matches, hoping to do it yet again. Are we going to see a defensive game or an offensive powerhouse? Live Oak hoping to be both of those in this one. Arctic on the great little save there. The redirect to bring it around the outside, but Sniper is ready to roll, getting that in the middle. And we've seen suffocating goaltending already from the Hornets in this game five. And think about the only game that really Live Oak have won here. Oh no, look at oh. that, the shot goes right by. I thought that was gonna be the perfect opportunity for them but still this isn't a bad situation for them the only game that they won was when the score stayed zeros past like the halfway point of the game so uh, stalling out grand lakes offense for as long as they can is also going to be another huge component for them to surface back in this series and so far that's what they've done in any sort of competition, people end up talking about the Brent Ben don't break mentality. And if you're the Hornets, you can just buy your time. You did talk about how the extra time might help the, the Eagles stall this one out. But if you're the Hornets, you only need one to go through and clinch this series. And neither team really showing much domination uh, on that offensive front. Both have been pretty suffocating there as the shot does come in through from Drispy, but no one there on the follow through gonna allow a breakaway here. Austin getting taken out. Arctic Biscuits, there's a player to keep your eyes on as they have certainly found a hot streak here so far. Dizzy though with a bomb downfield that threads past the defenders. Are you kidding me? First goal in for Grand Lake. Not what you want to see if you are the Eagles, but brilliant loft up there from Dizzy and Austin just sneaking away with that assist. Might as well pad the stats a little bit more. Halfway through game number five, 236 left. Hornets up by one. Drispy coming off of that kickoff goal. This is where we've seen them be so, so dangerous. That one didn't end up falling through, which is just fine. And Sniper on the miss. Lucky to have his teammate behind him. 
if you're rooting for Live Oak, this is certainly where they have to make their turning point so often. If not every single time that they've lost the lead, they never gather it back. And so if you're going to change something up, if you're going to flip the script, if you're going to rewrite the narrative, this is the moment, folks, in this game where Grand Lake have match point something has to come about for them maybe this possession or one soon after it's gotta be it to show it'll chipping into the mid there sniper with just ended up missing that ball was in great position but a good re-rotate there from drisby and now dizzy on the counter a minute and 40 left can they put another one through here? Dizzy up and around. Does not get the finish there, but Sniper coming back on the counter attack. Drisby able to punch it through on the lock. <gasps> Great shot there. Dizzy going to chip through. No, oh. it doesn't end up going through on the follow through. Oh. Biscuits turning back around and then epic save as well. Great defensive force even after getting knocked around. As the smoke clears, the save still comes about. You see Arctic Biscuits even put this ball away, but... They cannot breathe quite yet. There's still shots being fired. That one's just by the wayside. The demo's there, but so is the clear. And now, finally, some breathing room for Grand Lake. Now, Grand Lake able to get this out of their defensive zone. And just as we say that, Live Oak already on the attack. Bring in out the dogs. All out attack here. They got to punch it through. Now or never. Let's see who is going to step up big. We got Sniper coming around the corner to Shodel. Trying to clear, but a very dangerous area in that mid zone as Drispy getting the demo. Gonna open up an opportunity there for them as Biscuits swinging on through, but you don't have to score. If anything, just run out the time here. Drispy's clearing out of the corner. Is Austin gonna be able to knock it down? No, he does not. And a little bit of a reset. State championships in the palm of Grand Lake's hands right now. Just 10 seconds on the timer. Dizzy keeps it up and away. Sinking seconds off of the clock. Austin the Goat just has to hold on. And with all kinds of boost, they can certainly do that. Towards the back of the net. Will not find the goal, but will find the win. Grand Lake High School are your Louisiana High School Athletic Association Championship winners. Wow, the Hornets coming up huge there. Live Oak fighting until the very end. I just can't get over how close that sequence of events was in, in the attacking goal there. We had demos. We had off the crossbar. I think the ball even hit 50% over, but able to get the save there. And the Hornets breathing a sigh of relief. Brilliant plays from everyone there and finishing out that bracket. Your Hornets are going to be your champions as we go now and see Grand Lake High School, the LHSAA state champions. From play versus there it is, folks. You can see it there. Congratulations to that team and got to give a little shout out to Live Oak as well. Those Eagles, they didn't get here on a simple journey. It was arduous. They had game after game, one against the two seed, the three seed. Incredible journey and performance today from that squad coming up just short, though. Congratulations to the Hornets. Brilliant play as the Cinderella story falling just a bit outside of the champions. For Pyro, I have been Skids. Thank you so much for tuning along with us. Congratulations to the Hornets and good luck in that play versus cup. I represent the state of Louisiana here on the national stage. Hope you guys had a blast today because I know we did. And we are going to have some more Rocket League action later on today. But for now, we're going to close out this broadcast and we will see you guys next time.